okay so this is the binance interface this is how it looks like this is the general view of the binance.com website like the binance.com okay so let's go over this let me, let me get some of this okay so this is btc usdt we are analyzing btc usdt alternatively we can equally switch to other coins to analyze BTC markets. Okay, let's say this is other that's Cardano BTC. You want to analyze Cardano BTC? You want to describe it? First of all, if you look at this place, you will see something that looks like a graph. That is what it is. This is a chart actually. This is your where you do your technical analysis. Okay, this is the, the place where you do your technical analysis to know your support and your resistance, where you should be buying, and then where you should equally be selling. Okay, and if you're not okay with this view, you can equally expand it. Just click on this place. Okay, you see it has it has expanded. It gives you a broader view of um, the the background so that you can always do your chart. So these are your various charting tools. These are the tools you use to do your you can use to do your analysis. Okay, so actually most times I do not use I do not chart my coins from this. I prefer to use TradingView.com website. I think um, the, the 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 link is down it's at the last section of the video. Okay, or alternatively, you can just migrate from from here to trading. This is actually trading view website. This is it. Okay. Another thing we have to know is that there are various time frames. This this place that says time there is this for the minutes, this for the hours, this for the day, this for the week, this for the month, and so forth and so forth, and so on and so forth. Okay. So if what it means is that okay, current this four hour chart. What it means is that each of these candlesticks, these things here are called candlesticks. Each of them represents what happened in the past four hours. Okay. Like I said in the other part of the video that market tells a story. We can use the story of what happened in the previous four hours to gauge what will happen in the upcoming four hour. For instance, if you want to check and um, maybe you want to switch from four hour, you can move from four hour to one hour. Okay, so what it means is that each of these charts, each of these candles represent what happened in the last corner. For instance, the past in the last one hour, as at this point of 2020 or 30th of May 2020, as at six o'clock. Okay, if you look down, you see where I'm getting it, I'm getting this information. The price increased, like there was an increase in the price, like the price went up. Okay, so what I want us to also to know is that why the red represents sellers, it means the price dropped. The green represents buyers, it means the price increased. Red, red are those who are selling, they are the sellers. Green are those who are buying, they are called buyers. Okay, so you can equally switch from one hour to maybe you want to check it in minutes, 15 minutes time frame. We call this things time frame. You can always, okay, switch it to any of your choice. But then one thing, another thing you have to take note of is that the higher the time frame, the higher the time frame of your choice, the more um, the more trustworthy, I should say, the more um, trustworthy your chart is because the, the time frame is telling you, the higher time frame is telling you what happened for a very long time, okay? But then do not just do not just start backdating. You don't really need to backdate. Focus on the current price action. We call this on price, price action. Focus on what is happening for the now, okay? Focus on what is happening for the now and do not just try to um, confuse yourself by uh, much of backdating. Okay, but another thing is that you have to decide which time frame is convenient for you. Remember in the other part, I was saying something about scalpers, the traders, and long term traders. Okay, everything has to do with the time frame. I'm a, I'm a day trader and a scalper too. So because of that, I, I I don't usually concern myself with all these higher higher time frame. The highest I can always use is four hour time frame because it's a day thing. I want to start my charge in a day. I want to finish it finish it up in a day. So I don't always go further than four hours. I can, I could use four hours. I could use one hour, and these minutes I could use and uh, fifteen minutes as the case may be, or thirty minutes as the case may be. Okay. So don't just go confusing yourself with all these um. Maybe you're, you're a day trader. As a day trader, you have nothing to be doing with the 12 hours and the monthly, the monthly and all that and all that. So you just have to focus on 
decide the kind of trader you are and then knowing the kind of trader you are you have to now know the time frame that suits you perfectly fine okay so this is not really an analysis course so i wouldn't really start going into the details of how to do this and all that okay if you're interested you can always hit me up for us too there is a course for that all right so let's let's leave here and go back to okay the place where we are okay another thing that is of notes is what that is worthy of notice here you can see 24 hour change it means what has happened in the past 24 hours here we see that for the past 24 hours the, the there has been a drop of seven satoshi so to say has been a drop of 0 0.78 percent okay and then this 24 hour high shows us how high the price once got to in the past 24 hours so you can see that the past 24 hours the price once rose to 909 sats the same thing applies here, 24 hour low. There was a time in the past 24 hour price has actually dropped to 864. Now the volume, this volume tells us the amount of money that is coming into this coin. Okay, and why this volume thing is good is that if, if a price is falling, if the price of this Cardano, that's other, if the price is falling now, and then the, bit, the volume is not dropping as well, it shows you that the drop is not going to be sustainable. Okay, so you are looking at this to show that if there is a drop, you should equally it should equally be reflected in the volume. So if the price is just dropping and if there is no corresponding volume drop, you shouldn't really be in a haste to sell off, or maybe you are afraid that your the, your, the, your the coin you bought might dump on you. By dumping, I mean it will crash on you, so to say. So always look at the volume, even if if you notice a drop in the price, but then an increment in volume. It should also tell you that you shouldn't be in a haste to sell up. So that's just for the volume. And then finally, there is this price, there is this for the price. Okay. This price actually is a reflection of this current, this very price. Okay. So it tells you the last price that very item was bought or sold for. Okay. It tells you the last price that item was actually bought or sold for. So whatever is happening here is what is reflected here. Okay. So the price is not stated, it keeps on changing. So currently it's 889 here in Binance. If you go to maybe B, B, uh, maybe Bit, Bitres or any other exchange or Kraken, it could be 890 as the case may be. So what it means is that that 890 is the price that the coin was last traded for. Now you can see that's changed to 890. So whatever last price it was sold for is the reflection of the price. So the price is never static. It keeps on changing. Now here, we could, this is the order book. This place is the order book. This for the sellers, this red, these ones on red are the sellers, these ones on green are the buyers. The red are also called, they are, they are asking, like this is the ask price. All this price here is, is known as the ask, ask price. Then this price here is the bid price. Bid price means the, buy, the price at which buyers want to buy. Then the ask price means the price at which sellers want to sell. Please understand this. Bid price buyers want to buy. Ask price sellers want to sell. Okay. So this is, like I said, this is the other book. But if you just want to see just for the buyers only, just click on this place. See, this green one shows you the, the various prices that buyers want to buy. Okay, you can as well move to sell order. These are the various prices that sellers want to sell. Okay, but if, you, if you now want to have a representation of both the buy and the sell, just go to this other book and then it shows you everything. Okay, even though it, there's a limit to what you can see there and then. Okay, so... Another place that you have to take note of here is in this place. There is limit order, there is market order, there is OCO. Each of them represents something. When you want to buy at limit price, it means you, you don't want to buy at the current price you're selling. For instance, the price is 887. Now you've done your analysis and your, your mind tells you that the price is going to fall. Okay, so you are buy, going to buy at the support. Support is at maybe support is at 860. What happens is you just come here and change it to 8600 okay change it to 860 not 8600 please change it to 860 then you place your buy so because you've placed this your buy it will just go down and there will just be on queue you just queue up and wait for itself to get filled and wait until it it, it, it gets its turn to get filled okay so that is it but if you're using market order market order means you want to buy at this current price whatever price it is selling that's what you want to buy the same thing also applies to selling okay this buy this sell if you want to sell at market order you want to sell at the last price that the thing is selling okay that's for the market order 
So market they don't need to fix your price. The price, the, the market will automatically match you with the price that is okay. That whatever the last price it is, you sell it. That is what your your price will get filled of filled for. Now there is OCO. OCO means other councils order. Okay, let's look at OCO, other councils order. Let's look at the brief information about it. Okay, now you can see here we can we have price, we have stock, we have limit, and then we have amount. Okay, this price means maybe you've bought this thing and you bought this other this cardano and you feel the price is going to increase. Maybe the price is going to get to 9060. You come here and put your you come here and put your 960. Okay. 960. Come here and put your 960. But then you are not too sure. Anything can always happen. Anything can always happen. So that being the case, at this place now where you have your stop, you could, because you are not sure anything can happen, maybe the price might really not get to that very point. You could say, ah, in case price doesn't get to this, my 860. Okay, maybe let me just put it at, let me put my trigger at, maybe let me put it at 840. 840. And then come to this, your limit. Put your limit at, you could just put it at 820. Okay. I'm going to describe. What this thing means is that, okay, you actually want to sell at this very point. So what, what if a situation where my price doesn't get to this very point and maybe eventually gets here and starts going down. If it gets to 840 and starts going down. So what it means is that once it gets to this 840 region, you are, the, 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 your price will be, your order will be triggered. To be triggered so if eventually it doesn't get to 860 it's going to sell at 820 please understand this thing very well so i don't make mistake this one other council order tells you that this price this is the price you want to sell but you are not too sure your mind is telling you there is a chance that it might not get to this 860 that it could get to 840 and start reversing so what it means is that once it gets to this 840 you are you are alerting your triggering your this your order so if eventually it doesn't get to this 860 again and it starts falling it, you will not sell it off at 820. It can't go below 820. So what this other council order does is that it helps you to prevent loss. You do not lose entirely. Because if price doesn't get to 860, but then go to 840, and then never rose again, and starts falling. Once it gets to 820, it will just sell automatically for you. So that's one thing about, that's one thing that other councils order. Then one thing you have to understand is that once one of the others gets filled, if the, your coin eventually sells at 820, this one will get cancelled. This one will get cancelled. And if eventually sells at 860, this 820 gets cancelled. So this other cancels order is one of the mitigations, one of the um, things, parameters to put to checkmate against loss. Okay. So that's for the other cancels order. Other cancel order. Okay. So the same thing applies to the buy. The same thing as it applies to the buy. So also does it apply to the sell? Even if you click at this question mark, you see something they will explain. They said OCO to place a stop limit order and a limit order at the same time. When either of the other pair is triggered, the order will be cancelled. And if either of the other pairs is cancelled, the other the other order will be cancelled too. Stop limit. A stop limit order is an order to buy or sell a coin once the price reaches a specified price. Just the same thing we talked about here. With the stop limit. This is the stop. This is the stop. Maybe it could be 850. And then if it starts falling to 820, maybe you could put your 820. Once it gets to this 820, you now sell. But it won't fall, it won't fall lower than 820. So that's it. It's one of the um, structures you use to mitigate against risk. Okay. So what else is remaining for us to explain here? This is the mobile, this is the website version of it. You can equally use the mobile app version. There's really nothing different, just that in the mobile app, it's a kind of you know, joined together. But here it gives you a broader view and all that. So there is, okay, we've talked about sports trading and then there is the margin trading. This is not what, this, the class is not for it, okay? This, um, this is not for margin and then futures trade. This is just for sports. Actually, as a beginner, as a rookie trader, you should be concerned with sports trade. Then as you progress, maybe you can just start going to other um, higher forms of um, other higher forms of trade. Okay. Okay, so here this is for other. So if you want to analyze other coins, just go to this red drop down come to this drop down and then choose any of the coins you want to analyze depending on the pair you could use etf you could use bnb 
could use a uh she could use fiat fiat this fiat maybe want to want to trade all those coins that are paid with maybe those those coins that are paid with usdt okay so that is it if you want to analyze the rpa usdt upper usdt so the same thing applies here all right so it's just that if you check here if you check you see you see something like US uh, stable coins. These ones are called stable coins. Stable coins in the sense that they don't they don't fluctuate. The changes in price, the changes in price of BTC does not affect it. Okay, so it's more of a hedge. For instance, if BTC, if you buy BTC at um, let's say nine thousand dollars, and then you sell it to any of these stable coins, maybe sell it to USDT. At that 9,800. If BTC eventually falls to 9,100, your your 9,000, yeah, that your 9,400 or whatever price will still be the same. It doesn't change. Instead, it will afford you the luxury of buying more at a cheaper price. Let's say you bought BTC at 10,000, and then you now hedged it, like you converted it to USD, sold it to USD. Let me let's uh, let me locate BTC USD. Let me search for it here. Yeah. BTC USDT, BTC USDT here. Okay. Okay, you bought at, imagine, uh, Jimmy, you bought at, um, Jimmy, you bought at, BTC USDT, BTC USDT, look at it here. Okay, so assuming you bought at you bought your coin at nine thousand five hundred, you bought BTC one BTC at nine thousand five hundred, and then you converted it back to US dollars. So you'll be having nine thousand five hundred USDT. Now when BTC starts falling, falls down to nine thousand nine thousand. Okay, what happens is that you still have that your nine thousand five hundred. Nothing happens to it, but because the price we now has now fallen, you can now have the luxury of buying more BTC at a cheaper price. Okay, please understand this thing. So what these stable coins do, or what is, or rather what a stable coin does is that it, kind of, it serves as a security. You're hedging, you're trying to protect it against the, volat the volatile nature of BTC because sometimes it falls, sometimes it goes down. You do not want to experience that kind of thing. So what you are doing is that you're hedging, you're buying BTC, but you're converting it to any of the stable coins. We also have Naira, we also have um, other forms of other, uh, look at it here. Okay, there is BTC, there is USDT, there is USDT, there is BSD, 2 USD, USDC. These are all stable coins. The price of Bitcoin does not affect them. They are still the same. This engine, that's for Naira. Okay, you can buy BTC as maybe 4 million Naira, and then you just convert it straight to 4 million, to convert it to Naira. Your 4 million will be there for you. Even if Bitcoin falls to 2.5 million Naira, now your 4 million is still there. You can now buy more BTC with that your 4 million Naira. So that's what stable coins do. They sign, serve as a kind of um, security, kind of hedging, helping you to hedge your phone so that um, um, the, the, the volatile nature of BTC does not affect it, okay? So that's just it for that. And then, uh, okay, you can always go to the old website, but I prefer to trade with the new website. I like the interface. And you can always change, don't mind I'm using um, the black color, a lot of black, 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 black. I'll always switch it, switch it to white. Okay, but I prefer black because of my eyes, so to say, because of my sight. So you can always switch it to any color of your head, any background of your choice. Okay, so that's that for it. Is there any other thing? Okay, other history. When you when you go to other history, other history tells you your own transaction so far, how far you have transacted, like how far your transaction has. Um, how how you have transacted what your transaction so far has been that's for the um that's for the other history then open orders maybe you have a buy order you want to buy when you, when you go to the open order it will show you the buy orders you have okay both your buy and your sell orders it will, everything will be shown there then trade history shows you all your trades so far if you have funds if there is money you have this is you once you click on it will show you the funds you where they have okay so that is it for the interface and then yes there is another thing i want us to understand there's what we call taker and maker fee 
it has to it has to do with the limit and the market order. There is what we call taker and maker fee. Actually, what exchanges want is that they want volume. They want transactions to be coming in their in their exchange. So in a situation where buy you are not you want to just transact immediately and leave. You are called a taker. You are a market taker. For instance, price of Bitcoin is nine thousand six hundred and seventy-five. You just come here and put your market order. You want to sell at nine thousand. You want to buy it at buy or sell at 9675 as the case may be the let's say the price is 9800 this is a round figure the price is 9800 dollars now you just want to come here and buy it you just want to use market order by using market order you are called a market taker and because you're a market taker you you are going to pay some price though it's small sometimes it could be 0 0.05 sometimes 0, 0.0 depending on the exchange okay i can't really remember that of binance for now okay but because you are, you are a taker, that means you're taking market out from them, you're taking volatility, you're taking volume out of this exchange. Because you're a market taker, you are going to pay some fees. Now, if you're a market maker, a market maker will pay lesser fee because a market maker uses limit order. Now, you put, you don't, you don't, you're selling at 9,800, but you, know, you don't want to buy at 9,800, you don't want to buy at 9,500, you just put it there. Put your own 9,500 at this limit order. So if you get to that place, it will buy for you. Now, because you are a market maker, you'll be paying lower transaction fee. Please understand, market taker, you're taking from the market, you pay a higher fee. It's not really that much. It could be 0, 0.0 something. It's not really that big, but I just want to clarify it. Okay, that so that anytime you, you are, you're using a market order, just know that you'll be paying a higher fee than if you used a limit order. Okay? So that's just what I want to uh, clear. Okay, this one is for deposit. Maybe you want to deposit. This is where you come to click on it and then eventually loads. Okay, and then it brings out the various options for you to fund your account. Okay, I'm not logged in anyway. I'm not logged in. I don't want us to go there. I'm not logged into the account. So before I come for I, I need to log in. So with all the same thing applies there. So this is it for the Binance Safety. This is just how the interface looks like. Okay. Here you can always um, select the coin you want to buy. Select any coin you want to buy and then okay. I want I want still want to touch on something. Let me go back more. Let me go back a bit. I want to, I want to touch on something. Okay. Here. Okay. These are some of the coins. Just, just a kind of few of the coins that are tradable. It's a few of the coins that are just shown here. This is just the normal, um, the, the welcome phase, so to say, the interface, the home page. Yeah, the home page. Okay. So here now, um, you can actually fund your account with a debit card, with your credit or a debit card. With if you have a Visa, a Mastercard, you can always buy buy crypto with your ATM card. Uh, either with either your credit or your debit card or maybe you want to use p2p crypto exchange or third party payment but don't bother about all these things don't just worry yourself about it okay so now we have various markets we have various markets for instance if you want to buy a car if you want to buy a car you can see that there are various like a car could be two million Nigerian Naira. Okay, there are various currencies that that car can be sold on. It, it could be sold for, it could be sold using US, US dollars. It could be sold using Nigerian Naira. It could be sold using a uh, Swiss franc. It could be sold using maybe Japanese yen or whichever currency it is. It is. That is what this um, market represents. Okay, this is for fiat market. I had already, already talked about fiat initially. So these are for the stable coins you can always maybe want to do your transaction with USDT. once you click on it brings you all, all the coins all the coins that are paired with a USDT. okay brings you all the coins that are paired with USDT. but if you want btc market it brings you all the coins that are paired with btc see that is what we call quote and base currency that's for the forest traders quotes and base currency the same thing equally happens here but as a matter of fact you can equally use bnb markets okay these are just the various currencies that the coins are paid with it doesn't really mean anything but it's just that like anytime you're analyzing anytime you're doing analysis always bear in mind 
the base you're using you're basing your transactions on okay as a matter of fact i prefer i prefer USDT market i i, I love USDT market because the the volatile nature of btc hardly affects my coins whenever i analyze okay so i prefer it so that it's not when btc is dumping that coins to stop it's that dumping so i always love to use my unstable coins that's the fiat coins too based my own transaction on my own trading now this is for the sports markets all these ones now all these things are shown in the sports market i actually i say beginner you are you are to start with sports market then as you maybe progress or advance you cannot switch to futures futures tr trading and all that it's, it's more of, it requires a little bit of technicality although there is a cost for that for anybody who is interested in futures trading there is a cost for that there's the leverage leverage token it's just like is it three or two let me check i think there are just few of them one leverage trading does is that it it capitalizes on the up and down movement of bitcoin okay there is, there is actually an article for it for you to read up it capitalizes on up and down movement of, there is btc up there is btc down okay what it means that anytime btc goes up Anytime BTC goes up by one percent, this one will be to, this BTC up will go up by three by by times three. That times three leverage. If BTC drops by one percent, this one will fall by times three. Same thing applies the BTC down. If BTC goes down by this BTC now BTC goes down by um three percent, this one will probably go down by um, if this is goes down, sorry please, if this goes down by one percent, this one will go. Up. If BTC goes down by one percent, this one will equally go down by three percent. That is what I, I'm, I don't really, I don't really love trade. I don't really trade these ones. I don't really trade all these, um, you know, these uh, the um, leverage tokens. Okay, I I trade only futures and sports market, but particularly futures. Okay, but it, the main thing is just for you to get the basic knowledge. With the basic knowledge, you can always okay switch to anyone you want to trade with okay so there is the advanced the advanced is just the place we left now so maybe you can just check the classic let's see what the classic is all about it's just the same thing we just talked about here but just that the arrangement is a bit um, it's a bit different okay so this for this for the classic okay so this this is how it actually looks like this is how the normal exchange looks like this is it so here you can always select the pair we've talked about this one before the pair you want to trade with that these are the various coins that for instance if you're choosing btc these are the various coins that are paired with btc that you can always trade with maybe if you're choosing USDT. You see the various coins that are paid with USDT that you can always trade with. Okay, so here is the trade history. This is the, the history of transaction that has occurred so far here. Okay, now I talked about other book. This is really that other book. This is the other book. I should have come here initially. I, I took the uh, more difficult truth, the routes. Okay, this is the other book. This is the, the sellers, this is the buyers, the ask price, the bid price. Okay, that's for it. So this is the normal place to do your your buying and your selling. This for, and um, you buy here. This for sellers. You put the price at which you want to buy. Put the price at which you want to sell. We've already discussed about limits, market, and then OCO and all that. Okay. So that just it for that. And then, um, okay. And there is equally a provision for you to convert to naira. There is a provision for you to convert to naira. Maybe you've sold your, you've sold, you've done your transactions, and then you want to convert to now i want to withdraw to your nigerian bank account you want to withdraw to fiat i did a video on that you can check it on my um, youtube channel just mr solution mr solution is my youtube name and the background is just my normal my normal brand background my brand color the the one that is only that is shown on my the powerpoint is for this presentation just search for mr solution you will see it there I did a video on how you can withdraw your Naira to your bank account. Okay, so just as it is, you can equally use the app. Okay, but I prefer using the laptop because I, I laptop gives me a broader view. But if the app works, does it for you, you can always use the app. 
itself sometimes, okay? So that is all for the Binance Exchange. That's the Binance interface. Everything about it, we've covered it. So let's go back to where we were. Okay, so we've covered Binance. The same thing applies to other exchanges, KuCoin, Bitrace, BitMess, Huobi, and the rest of them. So once you're able to understand how those things I talked about, how they work, you can always function in any of the exchanges. But please, I always tell people, do not just trade in any exchange you see. Trade with exchanges that have high reputation, that have you know, a reputation, at least protection of your funds, because sometimes some of these exchanges, they might exit scam. Some of them, they will claim they have been hacked. And sometimes some of them get hacked too. Maybe they, when they don't have a strong security installed, it happened, it has happened to me. My phones have been lost in some exchanges, like two of them. Okay, so don't just the last one I was a uh, cryptopia, cryptopia.com. I used to have some, I used to trade there at the time they claimed they were hacked and some a, a, a certain huge amount of my money, okay, was taken off from there, was taken from that exchange. So always trade with exchanges that have a high reputation, but I always prefer Binance. Binance, KuCoin, these are my two best. I prefer this to anything other than the two, or maybe I could use FTS.com, or anything other than one, two, and then the FTS, so that things are just, okay. It doesn't mean that these ones are not good, but I'm just talking about convenience, and then the ones that always give me what I want. Okay, now we have to look at the candlesticks, understanding the candlesticks, that's the next thing we have here. Okay, like I showed us the candlestick in a chart. Now we just have to want to see, have a brief rundown look of what a candlestick is made up of. This is a, this is a diagrammatic, diagrammatic representation of a candlestick. We can see we have white and we have the um, black, okay? The white here, I'm just, this is the conventional way. This is the conventional way. Those ones there, you can always change the color to suit you. With any white you want to set the color, you can always say, you can always change, you can even send it to orange and blue, it doesn't matter. There's a provision for that. So, but conventionally, the candle is usually black and white. The, the white, the white represents um, the, the, white, the white represents the green, the black represents the red, okay? So how do you know a candle is green and how do you know a candle is red? Or rather, how do you know a candle is white and how do you know a candle is black? You look at the open and the close. If a candle opens, closes higher than it opens, that means it's a white candle or, or it, rather it's a green candle. It means bullish, it means that the price increased. Look at where the price opened. It opened at this very point and closed at this place. Now it means that the price increased. Now this is the real body of the candle. This place presents the real body. There is equal what we call the, the upper shadow and the lower shadow. Some call it weak. Some call it weak, some call it shadow. Whatever it is, you call it everything represents and um, every each of them passes the same um, information or knowledge across. Okay. So the upper shadow means and there was a time price got to this very point, but then it was pushed down to this very place. The same thing happened there. There was a price time price got to this point, but then it was pushed to this very place. So that just it. Some call it shadow, like I said. Some call it shadow. Some call, some call it weak. Whatever thing you choose to call it, they all play the same role. Then this one is for the red or rather the black. So when when a candle closes lower than it opens, it becomes a red or a black candle. Look at it, this is the opening, it opened higher. Look at where it came out, it now closed lower. That, that means the price fell at this point in time. There was a drop in the price, hence this um, coloration. So it's either red or black, okay? So upper shadow means there was time price got to this very place, but it was rejected and pushed down to this very place. Lower shadow means price got to this level, it was pushed up to this very place. This is the high. This is the highest point it ever got to. This is low, the, low, the lowest point it ever got to. And then this is the real, that just is for the um, a brief description of a candlestick, but how it looks like. Although there are equally various forms of candlestick, the formation and the rest of them, but this one will handle it in the advanced class for anybody who wishes to trade properly can can I, I there is there is a course for that is 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 there is a topic in one in the course is one of the topics in the course for advanced for people who want to go into trading properly where i 
analyze everything about candlesticks, their formation and the different forms of it, okay? So the next is we have the bull and bear. Bull and bear. Sometimes we say the market is bullish. Sometimes we say a market is bearish. Bull means the price is going up and bear means price is going down. Actually, why these animals we are chosen to represent um, to represent up and down movement is because of the way they fight. This is a bull. Bulls, when they fight, bulls start from the ground and push whatever thing they are fighting and push the person they want to fight, maybe or the other animal they want to fight. So because they are starting from the ground, they are pushing it up. Hence, bull, that means it's increasing. That is, you can see here, this, this green arrow represents incrementing price. So bulls start from bottom and then fight, like, like they use their horn to from under underneath the hijack, them to hijack the the very animal or the thing they are fighting. So they fight by bringing down their horns and then lifting whatever it is they are fighting for. That's why they are used as, they are used, as um, they are used to represent the upward movement in the market. Then the reverse happens for bears. When bears fight, bears fight from up to bottom, like they, they jump up, then start, they now, they now want to pinion the opponent. So look at this, this is why, this is why they are used used um, to represent the down down movement of the market when the price is falling if the price is falling we say the price is bearish if the price is going on we say the price is bullish so that just is because just because of the nature or the way these animals fight that is why they are used to represent the various movements of the market so hence the bull and bear markets okay now we have the resistance and support what is a resistance what is a support actually when we talk about um resistance we we see resistance at that very place or that very point that price finds it difficult to break okay that place that price finds difficult to break we see is as the um, resistance okay for instance look at this chart now this is a chart okay let's just start from here price started from here kept on going up kept on i reached here started falling started falling now go to this very point this point it goes to okay let me let's okay let me go by started from here okay this is the resistance this resistance kept coming down kept coming down then until it got to this very point this point it got it couldn't break it down again it got to this point it couldn't break it down again this is the this is the support like this is where it's gathered the energy before moving up again it came to this very point this is the resistance it couldn't break it again it hits it hits there and then started coming down then kept on moving like it kept on moving so it got to this very point came down again couldn't break it there. that's the support you get gathered enough momentum again i started moving up okay so let me just tell use a story and kind of a um, description to analyze resistance and support let's say you're climbing a hill like you're climbing a three-story building of course there should be first first and floor second floor and third, third floor you are trying to climb get to the third floor okay For, as, as you are climbing when you get to the first floor you're standing at that first floor assuming this is the first floor okay you okay assuming this is the first floor you got to and then you want to rest you want to raise that that second floor that is above you that you've not got into is your resistance that means for you to get to the third floor you have to surmount the third floor first okay so that that second floor if not crossed over is your resistance and then maybe you got so weak and then you say um, let me let you go down to get some energy and i came down again came to the um the under it came to the last floor so to say then that last floor and after resting maybe eating and then getting some energy and i start going up again you got enough energy that helped you to break to go go beyond the first floor you now crossed above the second floor that second floor now the top floor is now starting start serving as your resistance okay so that is just the way it happens here any the point that the price is finding very difficult to break above is resistance and then the price the price the the point or the region the price is finding difficult to break below is the support so normally the normal th thing they will tell us they tell you in trading is buy at support sell at resistance buy at this point sell at this point for instance here buy at this point you sell at this point then price will start falling down again falling down again you come here and buy again buy at this support sell again at this resistance 
Okay, so that's just it for the normal thing, normal um, support and resistance. The, the conventional thing is you buy at support resellers resistance. Everything will be detailed more for those who are interested in the advanced class because I will there is there is a life trading on that that helps you to understand this thing better. Okay, so finally we'll be looking at some of the common trading mistakes. You know, it's one thing to trade is another thing to become a profitable trader. As a matter of fact, I tell people it's better to become a profitable trader than become a professional trader. The essence of trading is to make money. So if you're making money or not, if, if you're trading or not making money, you're, you're just wasting your time, you're fooling yourself. So there are some common mistakes that traders have to avoid. I've listed them here. One of it is that you should risk more. You should always risk. You shouldn't risk more than you can afford to lose. Or rather, don't lose more, don't risk more than you can afford to lose. Please don't mind this typographical error. It should be one A. I didn't see it. Okay. So don't risk anytime you're trading, make sure you're not putting everything you have, every all your money into it because markets can go against you. So that calls for risk management. Make sure you are using your risk properly. Do not put every money you have into trading because it might not go that well as you, as much as you wanted. Another mistake that traders make is that they or intended trader makes is that they do not have a clear action plan. Why are you trading? What is your purpose for trading? At what point do you want to sell? Are you, what is your aim? Do you want to be selling at maybe 10% profit? Once it gets to 10% profit, you will sell. If that is what you want, then stick to it. Not when you get to 10% profit, so let you get to 20% profit. In the course of waiting for you to get to that 20% profit, it's now four lower than you bought it now you now be at plus so always have a clear action plan of what you want approach the market as you approach your business understand that you might not always have it your own way all the time it might not always go well as you want so having this in mind will help you to you know curtail some risk and then have a clear um, line of action okay then the next thing is leaving money in an exchange. I already talked about how I my money I left in a CryptoPR.com was taken. I left it in exchange saying when I need it, I will come and withdraw. So it's not always good for you to leave your money in exchange, especially those exchanges you do not trust. That you do not trust their security level and all that. That's why I always advocate for Binance because of the security measures they have there. It doesn't mean that anything cannot happen, but for the fact that you know, they've been able to build a very big technology around their sites, around their business and all that, it confers or needs a high level of, you know, a high level of um, confidence that people can always go there and put their money to transact with their two eyes closed, knowing that it's safe, safe, your funds are safe there. Okay, so do not always leave your money in it. Once you make your transaction, you made your profit, or maybe you are not ready, willing to trade at that point in time, just withdraw it, withdraw your Bitcoin to your wallet, withdraw it to your wallet, maybe your blockchain wallet, or any good wallet you're using. It's better to leave it there than leaving it in a because you always have access to your wallet. You know, whatever, even if you misplace your device or misplace your phone, with your recovery phrase, with your PK, that's private, you can always get back to that your wallet even when you download another phone, okay? And then finally, do not give in to greed and fear. Giving in to greed and fear is one of the things that capitulate traders. In fact, if you're able to curtail your greed, your fear and your greed level, there is no, there is no how you will not become a successful trader. These are the psychological aspect of trading. This greed and fear is the the emotional aspect of it. Greed and fear are emotions. As a matter of fact, you can use these two to profitably. You can use it in a way that it will favor you. You can use your fear and your greed in a way to favor you. So your ability to use it constructively or productively is what defines your, your profitability as a trader. There is a popular saying by Warren Buffett. They said, he said, buy when others are fearful and sell when others are greedy. I had to put it in my own way. I said, when you are crying, you should be buying. And when you are yelling, you should be selling. That's just my own, the way I had to put it. I put it in my own way. I said, when you are crying, maybe everybody is crying. When people are crying, their money is going, the price is falling. That is when you should be buying. That's when you should be greedy. You should be buying. 
Then when the price starts going up, maybe the price is going up, everybody shouting, yeah, 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 Bitcoin is going to get to $1 million, Bitcoin is going to $50 million. That is when you should start selling. Because the next thing will happen is that because they are euphoric, they already they have become euphoric, the next thing that will happen is the price will start falling. So you buy when people are afraid, you sell when they become greedy. Okay, buy when they are crying, sell when they are yelling. That is um, the emotional aspect of it. If you're able to use your fear and your greed very well productively, okay, you there's no nothing will stop you from become from not becoming a profitable trader. And by curtailing your greed, if you say you're taking five percent profit, once you get to that five percent profit, take it and leave. Close your eyes. It will fall. Price never goes up forever. It never goes in one direction. It, the law of gravity will always act on it. That's why we have that support and resistance. Whatever goes on must come back. Even if like let's get to from fifty thousand to one million dollars, it will definitely come back to fifty thousand. It's just a matter of time. You can check what happened with Bitcoin. As at 20, 2017, Bitcoin was at twenty thousand dollars and all that. People were saying it was going to go to hundred thousand dollars. But what is happening now? So that is it. Whenever everybody is becoming euphoric, everybody is building castles and things, and believing that they are going to uh, retire from this, that is when you should start selling because the next thing that price will start falling. Remember when we talk about the, talked about the market cycles? Market is a cycle. It never goes straight. It never goes in one direction. It keeps changing. It keeps changing and keeps changing. So the ability to you know use these changes profitably is what determines whether you become successful or you become a failure okay and then not learning lessons from your trade mistakes the truth of the matter is that no matter how good you are i am a trader i've been trading for years okay i still make mistakes i still make mistakes but then the difference is that the mistakes i make is not the the type that maybe when i talk about people will be like how oh, you made that kind of mistake no because i've been able to compound my lessons if I make this mistake, I'll tell myself, why did I make this mistake? You note it down. So that tomorrow you will not you don't make that mistake. If I traded and I had a loss, I'll have to ask myself, why did I incur this loss? How come I lost? What happened that made me to lose? Okay. So when I put it down in writing and tell myself this thing I did, this is what I did that made me to lose. Or this is what I did that made me to lose. If tomorrow, if I'm trading, I will make sure to avoid it. So but some persons they made the same mistake. They, they bought at a lower price, price was going up. Instead of them to sell, they were waiting for 50,000% profit. Then price crashed on them. The same mistake they made today, at the end they sold a lot. The same mistake they made today, the same mistake they will repeat tomorrow. Okay, but that's foolishness, that's stupidity. If you're not learning from your mistakes, how are you going to ever improve? So always learn from your mistakes. Always learn from your mistakes. No matter how good you are, even the best of all traders lose money. But the thing is that you have to structure your losses in such a way that it may not liquidate you. It's not that you don't, wouldn't want to incur the kind of loss that whenever it occurs, you won't be trading again. You'll be out of the market. You'll be looking for money again to start trading. That doesn't make sense. So not only for your mistakes, it probably involved maxing your like risking, risking reasonably, taking reasonable risk, taking sensible risk, risk that even if you incur a loss, you will always bounce back without feeling dejected or maybe without feeling frustrated so that's it and then higher of equally puts other useful trading resources the trade tap trader app is on google place equally on a I, I, apple 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 markets iphone markets whatever apple store yeah it's equally on apple store you can download the tap trader tap trader is the app that helps you to do your technical analysis you can equally use trading view please there is a typo here T R E D I N G. There has to be a G. A trading view dot com. Is it that you use the website or you probably use the app? Okay, these two places are where I normally do my analysis. I talked about it initially. Tap Trader and Trading View. They are places that help you to do your analysis. So I really want to appreciate you for taking time to go through this course. Okay, it's something. It's been a burden in my heart, and I've been thinking of a way that can pass this information to people, just make them to understand what crypto trading is all about without sounding, without using much words or typing plain or saying much things. And I, I just believe that it's as comprehensive as you would have wished. But then, like I said, there is, if you want to improve, if you want to take your trading course to another level, if you want to take your trading experience to another level, you want to become 
professional, profitable, and a professional trader. So I want to understand what trading involves. There is a course that I have put down, taking my time to put down for you. I've removed those exigencies, those things that will not be needed that will serve as distraction. I've carefully sifted them off and now brought, packaged a very educative, entertaining course, I should say, that would help you to you know, guide you through the step-by-step -step journey on how to trade profitably. Remember, you trade profitably before you become a professional trader. In fact, your aim should become a profitable trader. Keep the professionalism, professionalism aside. Become profitable. Then when you become profitable, you start looking for the professional aspect of it. So till I come your way again, or maybe till I meet you in the order of my courses, I remain your friend, Mr. Solution.